Karting is an amazing sport and if you're into racing then it's definitely worth it to get into karting. But with so many different options available at so many different price ranges it can be a bit overwhelming or difficult to decide for yourself which category is the best for you. That is why in this video I'm going to explain karting in four different tiers all the way from 1000 euros a year to 250,000 euros a year. So let's go. Rental kart racing. So the cheapest option in karting is rental kart racing. In this tier as I will call it from now on, uh, well you will be racing in carts that are provided by the track. So that means that you don't have to own a kart yourself, you don't have to maintain it, you don't have to pay for fuel, tires or anything. It's just arrive and drive. Now if you have done karting once or twice then you probably know what these things are like. They're big bulky machinery with well uh, protection all the way around. They weigh about 150 kilograms excluding the driver and only have about 6 to 8 horsepower. So they're pretty slow compared to all of the other carts on this list. Like on the straights you'll be struggling to get much beyond 70 or 80 kilometers per hour. But what do you expect? These things are made to last. They're made for everybody to have fun in. And at this price range it's a great value. It's either that or nothing. So you don't need your own cart, you don't need your own tools, you don't need your own workshop. But what I do recommend however is that you buy your own gear yourself. So helmet, uh, racing overalls, gloves and stuff. So you don't have to use all of those stinky stuff that the track provides. But before you hit the track or show up to any race whatsoever, it is important to gather as much information as possible. Gather information about championships in your country, about, uh, well, possibilities to do testing. And the best way to do that is really just to go to the track, talk to the people, talk to the employees, talk to some of the drivers there, if you see some professional drivers or yeah, semi-professional drivers. And yeah, just talk to them. Everyone is more than willing to help you if you are new to karting. Now for this video specifically, I will only be focusing on championships and possibilities in my country, so the Netherlands. Now, if you are from another Western country, which most of you guys are, according to my analytics, then you can pretty much guarantee yourself that, uh, well, things are pretty similar for you as well. So, uh, well, take the championships that I mentioned with a little grain of salt, but most likely there are championships like the ones I mentioned in your country as well. So, in the Netherlands we have rental car championships like the Auto Sprint Cup and Formula Karting. And like I said, just go visit one of their races, look at their website, see when they have a race, talk to the organizers, talk to the drivers. And well, you gather as much information as possible. You really cannot have enough information when it comes to karting. Stuff like if you need your own helmet, if you need your own racing overalls, and even if you need a license. The Motorsport Federation is quite strict here in the Netherlands, and uh, well, you might need a license for even taking part in some rental championships. But most of the time, the people that are there will know this. Now, after you've gathered as much information as possible and bought yourself a sweet, sweet set of racing gear, it's time to hit the track. If you are coming from absolutely nowhere and are willing to start racing, well, that's not going to work. First, you'll need a little bit of experience. For that, I recommend either one of two things. One, just go to your local indoor or outdoor car track and practice for two sessions a week. Or you can look into some car training courses or lessons. Most indoor and outdoor tracks provide some sort of lesson and there are also individuals who, uh, well, organize lessons themselves. For example, here in the Netherlands, most car tracks have a karting lesson, but this is mostly aimed at children. But if you're over 18, I'm sure there's something for you as well. Also, if you are under 18 and you live in the Netherlands, we have this thing called Den Hartog Racing. And this organization is really aimed at children and helping them, uh, well, getting their first steps in karting done in rental cars. They do like lessons where they teach you the basics of like racing lines and stuff. So after you've done your training and you think you are quick enough to take part in races, it's time to select your championship. Let's look at the aforementioned examples of the Auto Sprint Cup and the Formula Karting Championship. Now, the Auto Sprint Cup is a for fun championship organized by two friends who really just want to provide people with a good time and some good racing. If you decide to take part in this, then uh, you'll race in either one of two groups of more experienced or less experienced drivers. So there really is something in there for everyone. Even though it is mostly a for fun championship and not really that serious, a lot of quick rental car drivers from the Netherlands have driven in this championship. Usually they hold around 4-6 to six races a year at some of the best outdoor tracks in the Netherlands and Belgium and also Germany sometimes. And the best part is, participating in one of these races only costs between 50 and 80 euros depending on where it is. Now the Formula Karting Championship is pretty much the highest level of rental karting you can do in the Netherlands. In this championship you will have 9 races uh, spanning across like 9 different indoor and outdoor tracks which are all aimed at competitive rental kart racing. This part of rental karting is taken seriously to such an extent that there are even teams and well uh, driver coaches available for this series. 
Also, if you want to take part in this championship, you will need a karting license. So, let's say you want to take part in the Auto Sprint Cup Championship. So, let's say you're going to take part in the Auto Sprint Cup Championship, do some, take some lessons, do some testing days and buy your own gear, then you'll probably be looking at a budget of around 1000 euros for the entire season. And if you guys have been following me for a little longer, then you'll know I have taken part in the Auto Sprint Cup Championship myself back in 2021. At this moment in time, my dad's business was still being hit hard by all of the coronavirus restrictions, so we didn't really have the money to, well, do uh, Rotex. And I actually had a bucket load of fun racing in this championship. Now, if you want to know what it's like to take part in the Auto Sprint Cup Championship, well, in the top right hand corner right now, there's a video of me taking part in the second round of the 2021 championship. Go check it out. Only after you're done watching this video though, because, uh, well, I need to watch time. And if you watch the entire video, that's better for the algorithm. So once you finish this video, go check out the top right hand corner. Now, because I already had a lot of experience in karting and already had my own gear, the whole season only cost me around 400 euros. But like I said, if you are coming from nothing, it's going to be around a thousand euros for the whole season and you will have a buttload of fun for that amount. Now, if you are a little bit more experienced and want to take rental karting to a little bit of a higher level, then I can strongly recommend joining that Formula Karting Championship. In this championship, if you even decide to get yourself into a team, get a nice custom racing overalls and a little bit of a better helmet, you're looking at around two to four thousand euros for the whole season. And guys, before we move on, uh, I want to address an issue in the karting world and that is uh, that some people in the higher tiers that we are going to mention might look down on you as a rental carter and think you're some sort of peasant or anything and I want to say to you don't let anyone talk down on you. Like most people who do this are a little bit younger kids who are like in Rotex or something and they have no real concept of money. They don't know what it is like to have to work very hard to be able to afford racing. So no matter what you do if you're in rental karting or in any of the higher tiers, please don't let anyone look down on you. Everyone is fighting their own battles and everyone is doing the best they can to be at the highest level they can. So please just keep going and never give up the grind. When we didn't have money to race in Rotex, I got laughed at by some of my ex-competitors uh, because I was working in a supermarket to be able to fund my racing. And it can be difficult sometimes, but please take this from me. Never give up. You will get there at some point. Club Championships with Privately Owned Cards So let's say you've done a little bit of rental karting and you have a little bit of a bigger budget and want to take it to the next level or if you just want to start out with a little bit of a faster card from the beginning then buying your own card and taking part in some club championships is the right tier for you. This tier is by far the biggest in terms of options in championships and cards but today we'll only be focusing on two of them. For example, let's take a look at the Card for Fun Championship. This is a club level championship for Rotex Max cards, so the same type of cards that I currently use. If you want to get started in this, I recommend getting a used Rotex Max card. These go for between two to four thousand euros and you can have, well... And if you're only taking part in club championships, you don't have to get the newest of the newest. Most people in this championship are on cards that are a couple of years old. Now, if you decide to get a Rotex Max cards like I have, then you'll be getting yourself a 32 horsepower single cylinder kart engine, two stroke of course, that can easily reach speeds of up to 120 km per hour if the straight is long enough. Now the Cards for Fun Championship I was talking about holds five races a year at two different tracks in the Netherlands. But no matter where you are from, there are championships like this in every country. And like the previous tier, I recommend gathering as much information as possible before you hit the track. Visit one of the races, visit a local track day and just talk to people. Everyone there is willing to help you. Especially if they think they can make money off of you. There are multiple club championships in every country, so have a look at all of them, what the pros and cons are and then make your choice. Like the previous tier, you will need your own racing gear and well. But what most people forget when they get started in karting in this tier is that you're not done when you have bought the cart and show up to a race. Because if that were the case, then it would be a whole lot cheaper. You also need a means of transportation to the track, so something like a van or a trailer. You'll need a whole lot of spare parts, you'll need a whole lot of time, and you'll need a whole lot of tools. Also, every time you go out testing, you'll need to pay the track fee, you'll need to have food, you'll need to have fuel, you'll need to have tires, and you'll need to have little things like chain loop and WD-40 and stuff. Also, if you're coming from nowhere and have no idea about anything of karting, it can be a little bit tricky to maintain your kart. That is why I recommend working with a low-level mechanic. You could also go to a team and ask them to take care of your car, but if you do that, then the cost will quickly add up. You'll need to start building experience ASAP with maintaining the car, driving and just testing in general. So find yourself a mechanic who can join you at the track. I recommend going testing about once a week or once every two weeks if you really want to start building up your momentum. 
And karting mechanics really are the F1 engineers of karting. Most of them are ex-drivers, like me, I also do mechanicing for some people. And it just really helps if you as a mechanic have the experience of actually driving one of the things yourself. More often than not, there are more than enough mechanics available who are willing to help someone who has started in karting. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can also join a team. There are quite a bit of teams that do karting in this tier, in club championship level. Those are also a little bit cheaper than the teams that I have to race against. And in those teams, you'll quickly uh, get to learn the ropes of, yeah, well, maintaining and driving. And also, they'll probably have some mechanic available for you. You can also pay them to take care of the cart for you and store it somewhere. If you do that, you can almost be certain that it will always happen correctly. All the maintenance will happen correctly and you will always have a fresh and good looking cart. But like I said, the cost will quickly add up if you do that. Now, if you're coming from nothing, have no previous experience in karting and own nothing in terms of tools or anything, then you're looking at about 10 to 20,000 for the whole season. The thing with karting is that you can make it as expensive as you want by getting maybe a, a custom spray painted helmet, a custom overall or joining a team, you can really make it as expensive as you want. So let's say you spend your money wisely and don't get all of the unnecessary stuff like a custom spray painted helmet and a custom overall or something. Then it is completely possible to take part in something like the Card for Fun Championship for around 10,000 euros per year. Another option in the 10 to 20,000 euro per year price range is four stroke. Now the Netherlands is in a little bit of a unique situation when it comes to four stroke karting. That is because of something called the ID engines. This is a relatively new concept created by a millionaire who has a big heart for karting. And his goal is to, uh, well, provide people with the opportunity to do competitive karting at an as low as possible price. Actually, this is not even a club championship because the organizers are Grono Karting, which is the same organization that hosts the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge, which is the official Dutch championship for Rotex Max. Now, let's say you are 15 years old and you want to take part in the ID Engine Championship. Then we'll be looking at an ID Engine Senior Kart. This thing produces around 23 horsepower and can reach speeds of up to 115 or 120 kilometers per hour, which is pretty quick in my opinion. But there is something that is unique to this concept and that is that you cannot actually buy an engine. You can only rent or lease it. Actually included in this price also comes maintenance and full support with your engine. So if you ever have any problems, you can just give the, uh, well, the ID engine distributor a call and they will help you. Again, you can decide to join a team or do everything by yourself. But joining a team in this case is a little bit different. And that is because the factory team of this, which is called Cards Academy, is actually relatively cheap. You could join them for the whole season for around 10 to 15,000 euros. For the whole season, including training, including buying the card, that's all in. However, if you decide to solo it for the entire season, which, well, you can only really do if you know what you are doing, you can be spending as little as 7,000 euros a month to take part in an official national championship. Now there's a whole lot more to ID engines and I wouldn't be able to cover it all in this video because then it will be way too long. It probably already will be way too long. So I have linked the ID engines website in the description. There you will also find some other links that may be useful for you if you really want to start karting. So if you have a budget between 7,000 and 20,000 euros per year, then you can do either club races in something like Rotex Max or ID engines if you are from the Netherlands. And oh yeah guys, by the way, if you end up enjoying this video or finding it useful in any way, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. For you, it's only a couple of clicks, but for me, it literally means that I am one subscriber closer to my dream of one day hitting 100,000 subscribers. Since I have switched to karting content, you guys have been subscribing like crazy. We're getting like 50 or 60 subscribers every day. We're almost at 8,500 by the way. Anyway, I would like to hit 10k before the summer begins. So if you want to help me reach that sub goal before we reach 100,000, you know what you gotta do. Hit that red button down there. Also, like I said, this video is probably going to be way, 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 way too long. And even though it is so long, it doesn't contain nearly all of the information that I want to share with you guys. So if you guys feel like I have missed something, if you have a question or just anything to add to this video in general, then feel free to leave a comment down there well, asking your question or giving your information. In the last couple of videos, the comments really has been a hub of spreading your knowledge about karting and just having a good discussion. And I want to make that the norm. So you know what you got to do down there in the comments. Anyways, let's move on to tier three, which is what many people consider the first tier of real karting and also happens to be the tier that I'm currently in. Rotex Max Challenge and Iami X30 Championships. Yes guys, we have arrived at the official Rotex Max Championships and Iami X30 Championships. Now for this video I'm only going to focus on the Rotex Championships, well because I just know most about that because I have been doing that myself for the past couple of years. 
But pretty much everything I say also more or less applies to the Ayame X30 Championships. So you can pretty much put these two together. Also, if you are looking to start karting, I do not recommend starting off in this tier. That is because it's really competitive, it's quite expensive as well sadly, and you'll more than likely struggle if you decide to start out in this tier. I myself also started out in rentals, then went to Rotex Club Championships and only after a couple of years ended up doing this. But if you have done a couple of years of rental championships and maybe some club races as well, you can start thinking about doing something like this more seriously. So if you really are thinking about joining this, like the other categories, first go ahead and visit some races or call up some teams or something. You really want to gather as much information as possible, which is something I really cannot stress enough. Just gather information, information, information. Now once you've got enough information, it's time to make the right purchases. If you want to take part in the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge, then I do not recommend to buy a used card. You really always need the latest spec of card and also it's actually mandatory to have the latest spec of engine. So if you want to do Rotex Championships, you need to have the latest version of the Rotex Max Evo engine. In terms of the chassis, you really only have one option and like I said in this video right here in the top right hand corner, it's OTK. Now you can get away with running the previous spec OTK which is what we are doing for the first couple of rounds. This is the 2021 chassis. But if you want to do it the proper way, you should always get the newest chassis that's available. Also, one chassis for the whole season is not going to be enough. My recommendation is that you get two chassis for the whole season. It is possible however to stretch your one chassis out for the whole season. But well, you'll just sacrifice on performance and you also have a risk of snapping it and that is something that you definitely do not want. Now, a little bit more information on the Rotex Max Challenge. A lot of countries have their national Rotex Max Championship, which is called, well, in my case it's called the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge. In Belgium it's called the Belgian Max Challenge. You'll know what it is if you look it up. Now, in the Rotex Max Championship, everyone has the same engine. Every engine is sealed and you are not allowed to work on it. Does that mean that every engine is equal? No, sadly not. But I think that's a part of motorsport in general. Even in rental cars, there can be huge differences between the cars. But for the races, if you really want to take it more competitively, I would recommend hiring an engine for the races from a big team. That is also what we do. If we don't do that, we'll struggle. Also, talking about teams. Not being part of a team is a massive disadvantage. Like me myself, I am usually not part of a team. For the next race, we are coincidentally going to be, well, in the tent of a team, but we are not officially part of that team. By not being part of the team, that means that you have your own responsibility about everything that goes into your cart. So you'll be responsible for maintaining it, keeping it in tip-top shape, and well, getting to the track. Also, a mechanic is a must if you want to race in something like this. You'll need to have an experienced mechanic who knows what he's doing with Rotex, because it is pretty much impossible to be your own mechanic during a race weekend. Now, like I said before, you can make karting as expensive as you want, and the same case applies here. If you decide to join a team, do multiple, well, championships a year, decide to take a new set of tires every time you go out testing, go testing every week, then, well, the costs can quickly add up to more than 50,000 euros a year. But if you do it the same way as we do, be a little bit smart with how you use the tires, be a privateer, don't use a mechanic when you go out testing, and, well, just take care of your money, then you could do the entire season for about 15,000 euros. Now for that amount, I am able to take part in the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge and go testing almost every week. In the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge, we have about seven races spread across five or six race weekends and we go to the most premium karting tracks that we have in the area. There are some gems on there like Kerpen in Germany and spa Francorchamps in Belgium. And most tracks we go to are, well, top of the line, fun, amazing tracks to race at. Some tracks, however, more than others. Now, because the Chrono Championship is the official licensed Rotex Championship, and that's why it's also allowed to be called the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge, if you get either P1 or P2 in the championship, you'll get a ticket to the Rotex Max Grand Finals, which is the World Championship of Rotex. Now, the Rotex Max Grand Finals is something that basically every Rotex driver wants to achieve. Every year, somewhere in like December or something, They'll hold a one-off race in some warm country and whoever wins that race will be the Rotex Max World Champion. Now, unlike the national championships, here you will get supplied the cart so everyone is on the same chassis, will have pretty much equal engines, so it's really a pretty fair fight. So compared to the national championship, it's pretty much a fair race. Now guys, I'm going to be honest with you. If you do not have a budget of at least 30,000 euros for the entire year, you are probably not going to be a front runner in this class. And that is because the front runners in this class are more often than not 
Drivers that have competed in competitive karting from a very young age onwards for every year, have always had the best equipment, have always taken part in multiple championships a year. So, for example, the uh, BNL Championship, Euro Trophy and Dutch Championship. And well, the more you can do races, the better you'll become, of course. Often, these drivers have budgets between 50 and 150,000 euros per season. There's even been rumors of someone spending 250,000 euros on a season of Rotex. But if you spend that amount of money, well, he bought like 10 engines, uh, bought a new chassis pretty much every time he went out. There are rumors that he used 51 chassis for the entire season. That's crazy, right? And it's not just the equipment that makes someone quick. It's the whole picture. Let's say driver A has a budget of 20,000 euros for the entire year and driver B has a budget of 50,000 euros for the entire year. Now driver A is only going to be able to take part in the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge, whilst driver B is able to take part in the Euro Trophy, uh, well, BNL Championship, Belgian Championships, everything. Then of course the 50,000 euro a year driver is going to develop a lot quicker and develop a lot more skills than the 20,000 euro a year driver. Like some of the people I'm racing against have like a minimum of 20 race weekends per year and they are in the cart for pretty much every week, at least once a week. For these drivers, they can pretty much go to the track whenever they want because, well, it doesn't matter for them if they miss school because, well, that's money got you covered anyway, so why, why, why do your best in school when you can just go to the track? So sometimes that can be a little bit tough to compete against, especially if you have a budget similar to mine. So, if you decide to take part in Rotex Max or X30 Championships, please be aware of what you are going to be joining. You should not have super high expectations for your first year because you're not going to win anything. I promise you. Also, you should adjust your expectations to the amount of money you have. And that's something that I do and I'll come back to that at the end of this video. I actually make videos about every single one of my races that I compete in. So in the top right hand corner right now is a, well, a sort of report of my last race. Go check it out if you're interested. OK and KZ. OK, so let's say you've done a couple of years of uh, national road tax championships. Maybe you've done a bit, a bit of Euro trophy as well. And you have the talent and budget to take it to the next level then international OK and KZ championships are for you. Now the OK category is the fastest single speed category there is. These absolute machines only weigh 145 kilograms and have somewhere between 40 and 50 brake horsepower. So these things really, really move. Also, they have the softest tires that are available for karting. KZ is the top tier of kart racing. These things have around 50 horsepower. They're a little bit heavier than OK, but they have a six speed gearbox. These things can easily reach speeds from, well, of up to 140 km per hour. In some occasions, they're even quicker in drag races than some supercars like Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Now, if you want to compete in either of these two championships, well, again, there are multiple options available. But again, for this video, I will only be focusing on two of them. Those two championships are the World Series Karting Championship and the official FAA Karting Championships. Now these types of championships really are the top level of karting and are probably one of the best forms of motorsport in the world. Like if you take the top 5 drivers from any one of these championships, there's a big chance that at least one of them will be in F1 in the next couple of years. Yes guys, this is the championship where all the factory teams bring their latest and greatest cards, all of the F1 drivers are found and this is where the most money is made and spent as well. Now I won't be getting into a whole lot of details on how to get into this tier because well this is probably out of reach for 99.9% .9 of the people that watch this video. Before I cover how much racing in this class costs I want to do a massive shout out to everyone on Instagram who helped me gather this information. Also everyone who helped me gather information on these types of championships because you are going to get blown away by how expensive this is. By the way you should follow me on Instagram so you can maybe take part in some of my videos as well. The name is on the screen right now or the link is in the description. To take part in KZ or OK championships on the international level costs around 10,000 euros per race. Yes, not for the whole year, per race. So let's say you have a season of 10 races which is easily passed by some of these drivers. You'll already be spending upwards of 100,000 euros for only the races. So no testing, no buying the cards, no anything. Just the races. So for a whole season of testing, taking part in multiple races and well, just driving the thing, you're easily looking at about 250,000 euros for the whole season. Just think about that, 250,000 euros. For that amount of money, you could do an entire season of a regional Porsche Cup championship or a regional GT championship. But like I said, 
This is the most advanced level of karting in the world. And well, I even dare to say that some of the best drivers in the world, comparable to F1 drivers, race in these championships. Karting really is a high level of motorsport and a lot of people don't realize that. Because even over in the Rotex world, some people skip the OK and KZ category altogether and go straight from Rotex into racing. I've seen it happen multiple times. People absolutely sucking ass in karting only for them to be doing well in car racing. That's just how it goes for some reason. Now taking part in the OK and KZ championships is nearly impossible as a privateer. You really have to be part of a team in order to be able to, well, race in here. And getting into a team is a little bit tricky either because, well, you need to have money of course, about 250,000 euros for a whole season. But you also have to have at least some sort of results from like lower tiers, like Rotex or something. Well, this video just goes to show that, well, money sadly is still king in the world of motorsport. Your chances of becoming a racing driver and the amount of money you have are sadly directly linked to each other. That is why it is very important to adjust your expectations to the amount of money you actually have. Take my situation for example. Take my situation for example. Right now, I have around 20,000 euros to spend on the whole season of karting. And I know that I am very privileged to be able to work for it, to be able to have a dad who's crazy enough to help me fund it as well. And well, to be able to just do this sport. I, I realize that I am very privileged and I am very thankful that I'm able to do this. But 20,000 euros for a whole season is on the low end of the category that I am in. I am currently racing people who have budget of 50,000, 150,000, even in some cases 250,000 euros a year. So for me to be expecting to be at the front at every race, well, that's just not the realistic. And this is my tip to you, really adjust your expectations to the amount of money you have. If you do that, you can have a buttload of fun. Now, of course, I would love to be able to be a front runner at every race, but with our budget, that's just not possible. For me, the definition of a successful race weekend is as follows. If I am either within a couple of tens, like one or two, in qualifying of the big boys with the big budgets, and are able to at least hold my own against them in the race, then that's a successful race weekend for me. And I know that if luck is on our side, and, well, I just keep working hard, the occasional podium, or maybe even a race win, could be possible. Who knows? Also, I know that when the rain falls and the uh, playing field is leveled, we'll be right up there at the front. I promise you that. Now, I hope that all of you watching this video also find your place in this amazing, amazing sport and that you are able to set expectations that are realistic and that you just have a whole lot of fun because that's what it's all about, right? Anyways, guys, I want to do a massive shout out to my Patreon on Patreon. On Patreon, you can help me fund my karting career and you can get some awesome benefits for that in return. So, big shout out to you, Christian. You're an absolute legend. Now, if you want to support my kart racing too, then I suggest checking out the Patreon link in the description. Also, if you are a fan of racing, Formula One, or if you are just a karting driver yourself, then I would strongly recommend joining my Discord server. In here, there are various karting drivers, race fans, Formula One fans, similar racers and i'm sure you'll love the community so check out the discord link in the description down below now guys if you enjoyed this video or found it useful in any way like i said please hit those like and subscribe buttons you're helping me making my dream come true now if you guys want to know what it's like to be a broke karting driver from tier 3 then i would strongly 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 recommend checking out the playlist that will appear on screen right now and well if you want to see if the lifestyle is anything for you then i would strongly recommend checking out these videos anyways guys that was it for this video my name is Red Actions and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.